Jujutsu Kaisen Season 2, Episode 4, Hidden Inventory, Part 4. Don't forget to check out that Patreon if you guys want to watch this uncut, full length, all that jazz. Please leave a like on this video and leave a comment down below. It really does boost the channel with the algorithm. I appreciate you guys immensely. Let's hop right into today's episode. All right, this is right where we left off. Let's go home, Rico. With the camera following her. Oh, stabilizing on her is pretty gruesome. And now this is what I'm really curious about. I like how they're showing different camera perspectives of the same conversation, though. It's the little details, you know. We're getting right into it. I love it. With this music and the piano. It reminds me of the piano that played during the trailer. You guys know what I'm saying? Oh! Oh my god, using the curse as a fucking shield? I'm loving the scenery and our environment for this fight right now. You know? I know they're coming up with a new Jujutsu Kaisen fighting game. This could be a, a map, you know? It's pure chaos. So he has free reign in here. I didn't even think about that. He literally is the invisible man. I love this walking while we're telling the story, going behind these panels, you know? Right? I love that detail about JJK. He's like, I'll stop you right here, buddy. Yeah, what happened to Kuroi? I hope so, but I don't know at this point. Alright, round two. So the dragon wasn't exercised. Going right back, but now Toji has a sword. He is just so fast and utterly brawlic. Now, what in the hell could that be? I love how we use them as a weapon or whatever tool we're using these curses for. Then we make them disappear, blend right into the next attack, you know? We're not stopping, not relenting. We're, come on. Toughest hide there is, and he cut it in half like it was nobody's business. First off, the name Rainbow Dragon fits it perfectly. It's gorgeous, but I love how they're falling in the stationary little... That's his other one they pulled out. Am I pretty? Absolutely not. But what the hell is going on? It forces non... And that forcibly cuts any technique. In, in, in the domain as well. It's over for you. He's taking his own curse? That's a good play? Ah, two grade levels. Ah. That's like some Persona 5 shit. When you're too high of a level, you know? Oh, obviously. Makes a lot of sense. I'm really liking the play. He stopped it mid-take with that uh, cursed energy tool. It forcibly deactivates any technique. Whips out another blade. That was clean as all oh, hell. I don't want... Meanwhile, we're still all mid-fall. All that took place during then. He purposefully let him live. That's just some analytical thought right there. Wow. We got Kuroi, Riko, Gojo, Ghetto. Oh my god. Was that Megumi he just flashed up? Because he was blessing with parents, right? Okay. Okay. So, you guys were mentioning that during the episode in which the guy who hired, who's like the client media mediator you know who was talking to toji also talking to the religious group you know getting the bounty all that figured out was like oh yeah how's megami doing He's like how am i supposed to know but you guys mentioned he made a specific point that he forgets the names of guys like gojo you know don't i don't i don't remember guys names but he specifically named megami a female's name which megami was pissed at in the first season we've seen him make note of that as well i need to know so much information about this guy it's not even funny why? Why did you name him Megumi? Why did you have him? Why did you take your wife's name? What happened to your wife? What do you have against the Zenin clan? Okay, so this is the religious group headquarters. He's officially done the job. He's about to get paid. He had to bring proof, so he brought her body. He actually is a mediator, wow. I am so shocked we're not seeing Ghetto, Gojo, anything like this. We're not getting the aftermath of that at all? 
That's funny. <laughs> That's a bar. I'll only see you when it's job time or we're both in hell. Is that Gojo? Is that bloodied, zombified? Yeah, I'd be like, what, for real? For real, real. The stab through his head. Was it Shoko who did it? Oh, he gave up on counterattacking completely. Positive. Reverse curse. Negative times a negative equals a positive. So. So just to. So I'm sure you guys can clarify for me. So at the moment he got stabbed in the neck. Because we know his perception of time is very fast. He's able to quickly deceive what's going on. He was able to say, I'm not going to, I'm going to give up on attacking, counterattacking, defense, all this. I'm going to pour all of my literal curse energy into the reversed curse techniques, which, you know, can, are the only curse techniques that can regenerate and heal your body. And so he's never been able to do that before. So being pushed to the literal brink of death and obviously all the conversations he had with Shoko, who he couldn't understand before, <laughs> kind of helped him work his way through that. And obviously, it's not something he can just pull out at any point because it's a very difficult and draining technique. But shout out Gojo. He's high on life right now, literally. Okay. The true essence. He understands it now. The true essence of cursed energy. And once you know it, it's like the same as Nen. Once you know it to that sort of level, you're just a different player. Don't tell me we're getting round two. Don't tell me. Reversal? Red? A red off rip? Okay. That's going to launch him back immensely. This music is going insane. He's like, okay, I got to get serious about this. I love how we can have the curse around his neck or like a belt as well. One, the power to stop. The neutral application of Limitless. Yes, I love their explanations. They attract blue, which is like the black hole. And three, the power to repel, the reversal, which is red. And he's putting this sword on a chain. I love the deductions from Toji, and he's determined he can handle it. If your instincts tell you something's off, but you force through that and say it's fine, I don't know if this is going to work out. I love the weapon, though. Like a ball and chain, except... And we know in terms of the actual speed, this is anime speed, but Toadie's doing this in the faster than light itself. He, he, wow. Wow. These visuals of life, brimming, understanding, contentness, the elation he's feeling right now, the catharsis. Even on earth, I alone and, and the, am the honored one. True, very true. That's what I love about Fate Zero, the Fate series. Also very true. He's the, he's the deductions, man, the music. I love it. This is so beautiful right now. It going around the pillar to avoid the shield, even in the Gojo clan. I got goosebumps with how time is frozen right now with the piano, with the visuals. Is this his first time doing purple? Bro, this is beautiful. It's breaking through the chains. With the silence. The transition of the pillar. Of the eyeball to the wall that we just flew through. That's through his body. Is he talking to himself? He is. And that's why he's thinking of Megumi, I'd have to assume? That's why he... he I cannot wait to rewatch this scene. Look at that young boy. I love, like, the VHS style they're giving that. Is this how Toshi, Toji dies? And 
and he ends up save. So, we have an after credit scene. The curse finds Ghetto. I got goosebumps. And you know what's crazy? Mommy. I don't want to pause it right now, but I knew somehow the curse would find itself to Ghetto. Because you know me, I'm a, I'm a huge fan of Easter eggs and, and world building and writing and stuff like that. And someone uh, pointed out to me uh, when we saw Toji in the trailer and you see this curse around its neck, his neck in the trailer, and we know he's going to have it. If you go back and watch JJK Zero, this is the curse that uh, Ghetto has playful cloud in when he's fighting Yuta. And so I'm like, you know, like, I knew at some point Ghetto was going to get this, but I thought Ghetto would be the one to kill him to get it. I, I don't, I did not know this is how that would go down at all with the red bloody sunset. Is this the religious headquarters? Gojo? with Rico's body after we killed Toji with the with the white noise going on in the background I'm assuming oh my god yeah as we come out of the pure white room of the religious to the to the red reality we live in you know oh my does there really need to be any point that's the real question at hand, you know? When we're talking about meaning and the point and doing this and that and the consequences of actions, what is the point? I'm glad he stuck with his beliefs right there. Especially, if, I actually am glad he's saying that. As he's sinking into this black void, though, what is the creative story to... What the fuck is this show? So, I... Before, right now, I went and rewatched that little scene with Gojo and Ghetto, or not Ghetto, uh, with Toji at the end, and he most definitely is talking to himself. And I, I, it's so deep, and it's so philosophical, philosophically deep. I love it. But he's, I need to know more because I don't think I'm gonna fully understand until I know his backstory, only in how he relates to Megumi, because he obviously, so he said to himself. Why am I even fighting this? Like, I could instinctively tell something was wrong. I only work for money. As soon as Gojo appeared, I should have said that and ran off. But as I stand here, the pinnacle of modern Jujutsu sorcery in front of me, he has like a little bit of pride that he wants to take Gojo down. He wants, he twisted himself to fit that. And then he was saying, and he thought of Megumi and he remembered he named him Megumi. And then he was saying, but I thought I, he was talking to himself. You were going to live uh, without being respected, without, like, it's so deep, and it makes you think he himself wanted to be this heartless, cold son of a bitch, and to a certain extent, he really is when it comes to Rico, Gojo, Ghetto, but on his deathbed, he said what he said about Megumi, which got Gojo to eventually save and teach Megumi, which I do believe, um, Toji realizes or at least knows that of the possible scenarios in this harsh cruel reality we live in that him being trained by gojo and him megumi living that life is, is, is instead of being sold off to the zenin clan is a much better prospect for him and there's a reason he named him megumi that's a woman's name he wanted to remember it he has to care there's uh, when characters like that when you really don't even know at the end like it's so and they're dead now bro we saw gojo do a purple with the piano with the oh my god you guys have to tell me right now heart to heart man to man woman to man whatever was that not one of the most beautiful things music animation wise you've seen in an anime like oh my god i don't know what to say about this episode bro i am shook it started off with a crazy fight it was literally like this because we got the crazy fight and then we're like oh what's going on? and then we're like this it was like oh it's like that was a that's the definition of a roller coaster right there talk about an episode absolutely lovely hopefully you guys enjoyed if you did please leave a like let me know your thoughts down below check out that patreon for the full uncuts i if you guys ever want to like i've thought about trying to have more deep discussions about this like I, maybe it's going to be a long ways away but i want to start a podcast eventually bring on some of you guys bring on some friends have discussions topics debates about anime in general because that's the thing bro about anime you could be a surface level watcher just like the fights, just like the music and animation, 
and be a okay you'll love all these shows and i'm completely cool with that but if you are looking for more if you're looking to do a little deep diving if you're looking for some great character arcs a lot of these shows bro are in my opinion some of the best writing in fiction so i i just want to talk to you guys more about it i don't know let me know your thoughts down about that down below i appreciate y'all have a great day dapper squad peace out